This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. It's time to get educated on your Second Amendment rights. Welcome to two full hours of Gun Owners Radio. Your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Dramisi, and Michael Schwartz, will teach you about firearms, self-defense, and the laws that affect your rights to keep and bear arms. Visit GunOwnersRadio.com with questions to learn how to become a sponsor of Gun Owners Radio and get involved. Together, we will win. Now here's your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Dramisi, and Michael Schwartz on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks, welcome to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170, The Answer. Hey, folks, get legal matters that involve anything gun-related, or if you got any legal matters that involves anything gun-related, well, you need to call a good attorney. That would be John Dillon. What about red flag laws, gun registration questions, gun transportation questions? Maybe you aren't sure. That's what you you own complies with California gun laws. You need to call our trusted firearms attorney, John Dillon. John Dillon is right here in Carlsbad and specializes in California gun laws. 760-642-7150. Or you can visit his website at DillonLawGP.com. That's DillonLawGP.com. Today I asked John Dillon to call in to talk about SB 118 that passed into law and specifically what it means for gun owners. It looks like another expansion of the assault weapon law. John, is that what this thing's all about? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, how's it going, guys? Good. How are you, buddy? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh, even though uh, SB 118 was actually a budget bill act, uh, somehow we got an expansion of what is defined as an assault weapon in California. Uh, so I don't know uh, about you guys, but that seemed to throw me for a loop when I first saw it, uh, when you're we talking about a budget bill, and now we're redefining what constitutes the felony firearm. Well, don't, they, guess, o- so don't we- they always try to sneak in little things here and there whenever they do a bill anyway? They do, and, you know, this one... Uh, no exception, that's for sure. Right. Uh, but it did expand the uh, Assault Weapon Act uh, and, and actually include a whole other category uh, of firearm is now considered an assault weapon in California. Uh, you know, and to give a little bit of background, um, you know, so in the last year, uh, you know, Franklin Armory, which is a great uh, firearms manufacturer, they, they've produced a number of California compliant products. Uh, one of the big notable ones in recent time was they were the first guys to get uh, an AR platform uh, a pistol on the California roster. Uh, and so, it, you know, you can actually buy a single shot uh, AR pistol uh, from any store or FFL in California, and it's compliant with the handgun roster, and so it's okay for you to buy. That was... Uh, something that a lot of people weren't able to get for a long time. Franklin Armory did that. Uh, And along those lines, they came up with another uh, firearm. And when I say firearm, that's actually a legal definition um, uh, of a gun. So basically, under the Assault Weapon Act, uh, they define three different categories of firearms, pistols, rifles, and shotguns. And with various features, and they're all it makes them, you know, evil, scary, dangerous guns because you have a pistol grip where you can adjust your stock. Now, each one of those things, pistol, rifle, shotgun in the law, it has its own unique definition. Uh, and Frank and Armory, they were able to take a look at these definitions. They figured out that uh, if you have a, a gun with a pistol or air style firearm or something like that with a barrel length that's over 16 inches it's not a pistol and if you don't put a butt stock on it it's not a rifle and if the you know the uh, <clears throat> the barrel has you know lands and grooves and rifling in it it's not a shotgun so it's classified as a firearm and the fun thing about that was if you didn't have a stock on this you had that barrel length and you had the rifling you could put any other feature you wanted on it. So you could have a pistol grip, you could have a detachable magazine, you could have a forward vertical grip, you could have a flash hider, 
uh, you could have a, you know, a, quote, high capacity magazine, and it wouldn't actually fit the definition of an assault weapon in California. Uh, so the DOJ delayed that for about a year. And basically in our DRO system, that's the online system, background check system that California employs, uh, there's a little scroll down menu that says rifle, pistol, shotgun. And, you know, Franklin Armory said we need a, a firearm category to be added so we can start processing these guns and sell them to all the people who have tried to buy them. Uh, and DOJ, you know, in, in my opinion, willfully delayed this for a year until this new piece of legislation got passed so they could go ahead and ban the gun as fast as they could. And that's what SB 118 did. So, so this, the absolutely. So the, this completely complied with California law, um, 100%. and even though it completely complied with California law, and not a single crime has been committed with one of these Franklin pistols, they decided, hey, one. you know, we we got we got, we got to go in and 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 ban this too. Had nothing to do with uh, you know safety or effectiveness. This just had to do with gun banning. And it just confirms everything we've ever said about all this ridiculous malarkey that they, they try to push down, they, they successfully push down our throats. Now, if you own one, so you used to buy, be able to buy one of these. If you own one, um, and the law doesn't take effect until what, January? Uh, let's see. It doesn't go, it actually is in effect, but you, there is, uh, if you owned a, one of these guns before September 1st, 2020, uh, you have you're gonna apparently have the ability to register this now. The regulations that go along with this law they're not out yet. So the DOJ is supposed to have, uh, you know, the regulations of how they enforce this new part of uh, the assault weapon laws, uh, but we don't have that. They, they haven't published it yet. They haven't come out with it, um, which is just another example uh, of, you know, the state of California. They they ban everything, and then we'll figure out the details later. And, it's and, not, and that's why we have such a, you know, smorgasbord of bad law. And again, when they say, oh, gee, it's just about safety. It's just about the, you know, think of the children. This is, it's completely false. This wasn't even a semi-automatic gun. This was a bolt action gun, you know. It, Single it was, shot. Yeah, exactly. So, and they banned it. So when they tell you, oh, no, no, it's just about these scary machine guns and it's all about the children and think about safety. It is a complete and total lie. Yeah. And and this is proof positive. That, that, that's a fact. Are they trying to eat this cool. elephant one bite at a time? Is that what they're trying to do? Uh, that's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, and, you know, it gets turned into a cliche, uh, you know, give an inch, they'll take a mile. And, and, you know, when people say that these days, especially the, the anti-gun groups will try to you know, poo-poo that uh, idea and say, what are you talking about? Like, that's just a ridiculous argument. But uh, anyone who's really followed along in, in the last, two, you know, 20, 30 years, especially in California, uh, that's exactly what they've done. And, and a perfect example is this most recent, you know, the magazine law that we had, uh, a, you know, a, a wonderful decision come out of the Ninth Circuit, mm -hmm. uh, what we're now two weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. But that all started... You know, back in the day, they said, oh, we're, we just want to ban people, stop people from getting new ones. So you can keep the ones you own that you lawfully bought. And we'll never, ever take those away from you because you lawfully bought them. And that's OK. We just want to keep the bad guys from getting new ones. And, you know, fast forward years down the road and they go, oh, well, we're going to ban the ones that you've legally owned sure. you know, for 20 years. And if you don't, you're going to be a criminal. That's like uh, keeping your health plan your and keeping your doctor. I got it. Okay. Yeah, That's and, and with you know, and with the assault weapon uh, laws, you know, it's the definition comes out, and over time, it just gets expanded and expanded and expanded. And with every new, you know, iteration of the law, that they're encompassing more and more guns. And anyone who thinks that this latest one with SB 118 is going to be the last time, like, oh. oh, no more assault weapon laws uh, are going to be passed uh, after this one. You know, it's a joke to right. even consider that. All right. We're going to take, hey, we're going to take it. We're going to take a break, take a deep breath. And <laughs> let me, let me just ask you a question. So the only way to make this better is to turn this state red, right? Well, at least make it, you make it turn less the state pro Second Amendment. Yeah, maybe that's not maybe red. It's blue or red as long as it's pro Second Amendment. Maybe we have to go pink. Don't get me started on red.
<laughs> Let's go pink. Right on. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Hang in there, John. We're going to have him stay for another segment because he's got tons of news right here on FM 96.1. AM 1170, The Answer. Welcome back to Gun Owners Radio, educating you on your Second Amendment right. Now, here are your hosts of Gun Owners Radio, Dave Stahl, Joe Dramisi, and Michael Schwartz on The Answer San Diego. Welcome back to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. All right. Oh, I turned the page. It all stuck together. It's a little warm in here. All right, folks. Hey, what's the best defense for self-defense and against those horrible new red flag laws? That would be firearms legal protection. Firearms Legal Protection is the legal defense program for lawful gun owners with a 24-7 emergency hotline. Let them provide the lawyer for you. Call Firearms Legal Protection today. That's Firearms Legal Protection at firearmslegal.com. Or you can call them direct at 469-310-9100. All right, we're bringing back the hardest working attorney on the planet. And it's only because he's into guns and he lives in California. (laughs) And there is not another law firm in the planet that works as hard as a California John Dillon, our attorney. How you doing, bud? How's it going, guys? Telling the truth, though, aren't I? <laughs> Living in California, uh, gun lawyers do have uh, a lot to, to take up our time, that's for sure. <laughs> they do keep you busy. There's no if ands, or buts about it. Yeah, if I ever go out of state for a convention or any type of thing and I tell people I'm a gun lawyer, they look at me with a very puzzled <laughs> look like, why Why would I ever need a lawyer for a gun? Or yeah, a right. Shop? When I can get that's a CCW ridiculous. for 50 bucks in Texas, but that's yeah. another story. And then I just say California, and they go, oh, got it, I got it. It's for, <laughs> now I understand. All right, so yeah. continue on where we rudely interrupted you with a commercial. Well, specifically, there was a big ruling about about uh, magazines, the magazine ban. So we want you to go into detail. You know, we touched on it last week, and we touched on it a little bit here and there through San Diego County gun owners and Orange County gun owners and Riverside and everything. But can you tell us what we know from a, from a from a lawyer legal perspective? What do we what do we know? What's it mean, and what what's the future look like? All right. So this was it. Uh, it was the case of Duncan v. Becerra, and this was a challenge to California's uh, ma- uh, high capacity or large capacity magazine prohibition, anything that holds over 10 rounds. Um, and so what happened, uh, w- we got the decision from the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and it actually was a pro uh, two-way decision, uh, which is a very rare thing to come out of the Ninth Circuit. Yeah. But essentially what happened, uh, long story short, is we got a preliminary injunction and summary judgment uh, in our favor at the district court level with Judge Benitez. And a lot of people uh, will remember this as what they called Freedom Week stemmed from all mm-hmm. from this ruling uh, where we were able, the, the law banning buying and selling uh, high capacity magazines uh, was enjoined. And so we had about a week's period of time where we were able to buy a bunch of magazines and it was lawful, no big issue. Uh, the state uh, eventually appealed that and through that measure, they uh, got the court to issue what's called a stay, which is basically, all right, we're going to put a pause on this decision until uh, it, we have a decision at the appellate level. And, and the wording that was used, which is going to be important in a few minutes, uh, is until final resolution on appeal. So the state and plaintiffs, they go and they go and argue their case in front of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, three-judge panel. Uh, and we get a decision about two weeks ago now uh, where the, the court held that uh, they affirmed the lower court's decision, district court's decision, stating that the magazine uh, ban violated the Second Amendment, that strict scrutiny applied uh, when they were to analyze whether or not it was a constitutional law. And even uh, uh, if they applied intermediate scrutiny, which is the middle tier of a constitutional analysis, 
uh, it would still fail and be unconstitutional. So it was a very, very favorable decision uh, that came out. And I recommend anyone who's at all interested in it. It's a great read uh, and something that actually makes sense if you sit down and take the time to, to read it. Uh, so we get this decision and that came out on a Friday morning. And uh, as I'm sure some of your phones, even uh, my phone just started ringing off the hook oh, at yeah. my office because people want to know what's this going, mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's this mean? Can I now buy magazines? And it was uh, an exciting morning and people were going crazy. Uh, we, my office, we actually put out a little notice on our social media saying, hold off, just let us, you know, let us get the decision, read the decision, and then we'll let you know. Uh, and, uh, upon reading that, uh, you know, that's when that final resolution on appeal comes into play. So although we have a decision, uh, from the ninth circuit court of appeals, uh, affirming the lower court decision, uh, we got to remember this is law in the courts, so there's a lot of procedural stuff that still needs to happen. So, because a stay was put into place at the district court level, that stay is still in place right now, uh, even with this uh, court decision coming out. And that was the confusion a lot of people had. Uh, although the Ninth Circuit said that this law was unconstitutional, the stay preventing people from buying uh, these magazines was still in place. Now, um, that final resolution on appeal language, because even at the court of appeals level, there's still basically two main options that the state has in order to further appeal this decision. Uh, they can, uh, within 14 days of the decision, they can file uh, what's considered a motion for reconsideration uh, on bonk. So that's basically asking the Ninth Circuit, uh, hey, please reconsider this case. But instead of a three-judge panel, where it's going to go before the full 11-judge panel of the Ninth Circuit. Uh, and it's basically they re redo the arguments and redo the case in front of 11 judges instead of three. Uh, th that, and that has to be done. They have to make that request within 14 days' decision. I believe uh, the 28th. Uh, this Friday yeah. uh, would be the deadline for that. They already made uh, it. Are you kidding? They made it two minutes after the the last one came out. Yeah, before they even go and run. Well, you know, so yeah, the way, it's so, it's kind of like like the, the way you're saying. Hey, you still have to go through procedures. Um, it's kind of like when you're playing poker. You know, just because you're dealt a full house, you know, you still have to give everybody else the time to, you know, raise and call and, yeah, you know, exactly. so so that's all that's going on. People are like, yeah. oh, the California No, 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 no. No, what is happening is, is I win and you lose and you go, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I need another ace. You have to give me because I deserve another ace. Yeah, it, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, John, uh, just yeah. uh, John, um, yeah, go for it. I just want to ask you: Is uh, as as strong as that opinion was from the three judge panel? Because that was uh, that was pretty good. What they what they said. Now they just kind of laid it out. Um, how okay. does an eleven judge panel go about, um, you know, tearing that down basically or reversing that? Is that going to be an easy, likely thing? Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, I believe that Judge Benitez's uh, original uh, decision uh, was extremely well written, well reasoned. Uh, and I believe that's why, uh, you know, the Court of Appeals, you know, ruled as it did because they had such a good foundation uh, of a ruling. And, you know, the, the court, Ninth Circuit three-court panel, they, they made a good ruling. Uh, but, you know, as we all know, there, there, there are judges that interpret you know, uh, shall not be infringed very differently from others. Uh, and the Ninth Circuit for a long time now has uh, leaned left, so to speak, in, in uh, a lot of the, the judges that, are, that have been appointed. So uh, it could go the other way. It is possible. But, you know, I can't say that it's not possible. There's always the chance that it could uh, swing. And, you know, we've seen, you know, various decisions go back and forth. You know, uh, you know Peruta which is, was the concealed carry case years ago, you know, that one at the district court level and then got uh, re overturned uh, on bonk, you know. So it can happen. And, John, is that 11-judge that panel, if they go that way, is that's a randomly assigned panel, those 11 judges? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, how many? So 11 out of how many? Like how many total judges are there? Well, 
I think the more important question is, we'll answer that is, let's say we win again. Can they appeal it again with more judges? Well, yeah. So going back to that procedure, so they can do this on bonk request or they can actually just go and do what's called a writ of certiorari and uh, appeal directly to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, that's actually an option for them now. Um, I don't believe that the state would, would actually want to do that. Oh, God, no. Um, at the moment, because right now, the way I see it, you have four pro-Second Amendment justices, four uh, anti-Second Amendment justices. It, and when I say that, I mean in, in the interpretation of Heller, DCV Heller. Um, and then you have one swing vote, uh, which is largely considered to be Justice Roberts, you know, and I don't believe anyone knows where he w- would actually decide on some of these cases. So I don't think uh, anyone's willing to let it uh, be decided uh, by Roberts, you know, even uh, amongst the justices. They, I don't think they have enough faith uh, in where he will lie uh, on his decision. So I don't know if they'll do that straight appeal. But let's say they do an en banc decision. Even after that, they can actually uh, – appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court still. Well, how many, back to Michael's question, how many lawyers, I mean, judges, lawyers, how many judges can they keep picking? I mean, how many do they have to pick from? Well, there's a good amount, but uh, it is 11 of them. Um, and, you know, one of the things that you know, a lot of people have technically been relying on with uh, you know, the president right now is he's been appointing a lot of federal judges, especially right. in the Ninth Circuit. Now, I'm not going to be one to say that just because a certain president uh, appoints a judge, that means uh, I, we know how they're going to rule on certain cases. Uh, I think that is a bad line of reasoning. Uh, the only way you can really get an idea of how a judge will interpret the law is if you study the cases that that judge has had before mm-hmm. them and seen how they've ruled and seen their actual reasoning. Uh, but, you know, it, it could help. It may help um, having uh, more, if there are more, I guess, textualist, constitutionalist, or conservative uh, type judges that have been appointed, that may be a good thing. But at this point, it's going to be difficult to, to try to predict anything like that, and we'll just have to see. So if we lose, can we appeal? Uh, yeah, so the, if it gets overturned on Bonk, there is still uh, the the option to appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. Okay. Uh, it, so the, there are there are still options uh, and lots of things that can be done. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, court cases are not what they appear to be on TV. They last a long time. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think anyone's going to get anything, uh, any hard line decision on whether or not they can buy a magazine in the next week or so. No, I think it's uh, after. We'll see. You never know. After November 4th. All right. You need to take a nap because you got a lot more on your plate, okay? Because I got a feeling you're going to be busy. I, uh, I'm i going to be pretty busy this week, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, it's always good talking to you. Folks, I'm telling you, if you have anything gun questions, gun related, anything like that at all, you need to check out John Dillon, 760 642 7150, or go to dillonlawgp.com. Thanks, buddy. And enjoy talking to you. All right. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have a super special guest on the line. I cannot wait to hear her story right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. There's more Gun Owners Radio with Dave, Joe, and Michael to come on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks. Welcome to Gun Owners Radio, FM 961. AM 1170, The Answer. California assault weapon laws make it almost impossible to own an AR pattern rifle. Well, what is the solution, Cali Key? Cali Key converts any mil-spec direct impingement AR pattern rifle into a straight pull-bolt action rifle so it can have all the features without being considered an assault weapon. It's a true drop-in solution. No milling, no aesthetic modifications, and no turning off your gas system. Keep your entire AR collection intact at a price you can afford with Cali Key. 
Check out Cali Key at CaliKey.com. That's K-A-L-I-K-E-Y dot com. All right, Michael, who have you got on as a special guest? Well, so uh, a few weeks ago, we got a message uh, on the San Diego County Gun Owners page, and uh, uh, it was from someone who said, hey, I was in an incident. I was in a school shooting uh, not too long ago, and um, it had a profound effect on me, and uh, she wanted to talk more about it. So I said, okay, well, uh, if you'd like to write an article, maybe we could publish an article, you know, that would, that would be fairly interesting because mm-hmm. she indicated that, that the experience actually got her thinking about the second amendment or, or mm-hmm. maybe even uh, gave her a, a more positive view on the second amendment. And, uh, an hour later I had 500 words in it from an article and oh. I, and I read it and, uh, come to find out, uh, she was a student at the time. She was in 11th grade, I believe. And, uh, she had a lot of things to say and she had a lot on her mind and she wanted to, talk more about it and get the message out there because she felt like the message in the media and from some other groups um, did not portray, um, you know, the true story, the true story, but it didn't portray um, everybody's story. They, right. they took, you know, a few people's story and made sure. it look like, well, this is the narrative. So uh, Kaylee and I got to talk in and uh, we published her article and I wanted to have her on the show and talk about the article she wrote because it, it ended up being, um, a fantastic article. And if you haven't read the article, listen to Kaylee and then go to our website, sdcgo.org slash blog and read the article called Gun Control is Killing Our Kids. Wow. So Kaylee, are you online? Yes, I am. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. I really appreciate you reaching out. I appreciate the article that you wrote. I thought it was fantastic. Thank you so much. What What inspired you to reach out to us? I, um, they had started a March for Our Lives, which is a pro-gun control movement in our city. And pretty much they're trying to make more gun control laws here in California. And I didn't think any of the laws that they wanted to make would help. And I talked to some kids at our school and a lot of us were not happy with it. Um, and so I really just wanted to get the story that not everyone is anti-gun who is in a shooting. Sure. Why not, tell us, uh, you know, you don't have to give us specifics, but where, whereabouts do you live? You're, you're here in California. Yes. And you I north, or, north or south? Santa Clarita. Uh, south, yeah. Just above L.A. And what, what's, the, what's the name of the high school? Saugus High School. And just tell us a little bit about what happened that day. So... I had left my class, and at 7.38 a.m., a shooter opened fire. He had fired one shot. His gun had been jammed. Um, He was able to fix the gun and fire off five more shots, um, killing three students, including himself, and injuring three others. And what would tell us about a little bit about your experience that day? What, how did you find out what was going on and, and what happened to you that day? I was standing with my friend and we were talking and I had heard the bang, um, but I didn't think much of it until people started running and there was a whole bunch of screaming. So I started walking towards the sounds and someone had stopped me and said that I had to leave. And so I turned to my friend and he had grabbed me and we had started running and we found a girl and she was covered in blood. And so my friends had grabbed her and we all ran into a classroom to come to find out that she had been shot. Um, And so we started uh, doing first aid and we've waited for what felt like hours for cops to arrive um, to help us out. And finally we had made it out and she's doing okay. Fantastic. And you found out afterwards about the, uh, you know, the situation, who the, who the uh, shooter was and and about the gun, the gun was, uh, uh, he was using the gun illegally. The gun was obtained illegally. Um, and you found out about it jamming after the fact. And I thought you made a very interesting point in your article that, hey, this could have been stopped right then and there. There was, there was plenty of opportunity to stop this, this shooter, this murderer, but nobody had the tools to, to stop him in, in, in this school. They'd, they'd, they'd made the tools to stop this murderer um illegal in your school and and you made the point in the article about how appalled by that you were yeah 
And and you he, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Not not only did he the gun jam right after the first shot, so right after that first shot, it all could have been stopped. But um, he had also told friends standing nearby what was about to happen. So if one of them was able to could have said something within the minute that it took him to grab the gun after telling them, then it might have been able to have been stopped before the first shot, too. So what do you think some of the some of some of the changes that you'd like to see? Tell us a little bit about some of the changes that you'd like to see, especially you know, pertaining to schools and, and uh, the ability to defend schools, that sort of thing. Um, so I definitely want armed guards on campuses. Um, this whole defund the police movement is not my thing. Um, I really, really, really want there to be armed guards, armed policemen on campus. We had one. Um, we do not know where he was at the time, but he was not where he was supposed to be. And um, I also want teachers to be able to carry um, after going through the training that they need to have gone through. And 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 that's a strong point. Now, you and some other friends in your school have stood up and talked about this. Um, And uh, what's some of the reaction you've gotten? When you you started, you know, talking to your friends and saying, hey, this is what I think should have happened after, you you know, some of the facts of of the case came out there, um, you know, what's some of the reaction that you've gotten? I got it on both ends of the spectrum. Um, a lot of my friends were like, yeah, I absolutely agree. But uh, there are some other people that go to our school who are completely anti-gun, um, blocked me, like didn't want to talk to me. I've gotten um, death threats for my views on the guns. Um, so... I do have a lot of people agree with me, but I also have a lot of people who disagree with me and would like to see me dead, which is what they're preaching against. Wow. And these people won't talk to you, right? The ones that are against it? They won't even have a conversation. They just flat don't. Not at all. Yeah, yeah, it's typical. Yeah. And when you and I talked before, correct me if I'm wrong, but what you had said is that, yeah, you'd you'd shot a gun Mm -hmm. once or twice growing up, but you, you were pretty i'd say uh, i'd describe it as kind of you know ambivalent when it came to gun ownership it wasn't really on your radar uh you weren't really for or against it and this incident uh you know being you know trapped in this school and waiting for a good guy with a gun to show up and uh, for what seemed like hours uh had a had a pretty impact a pretty big impact on on you and and you now describe yourself as fairly pro second amendment pro gun is that is that all accurate yes and your parents have been super supportive. I know I, I, I talked to your dad about publishing the article, and um, they, they seem to be behind you. Have, have they been, uh, you know, fairly supportive with everything, or, or what was their reaction when you when you? I mean, this is a bold stance, Kaylee. This is something that I haven't really seen uh, a lot of people make public. I, I know a lot of people who have this opinion. Uh, I've heard of a lot of uh, you know students and and. Uh, you know, teachers that have this opinion, but it's it's bold to stand up and say, hey, this is what I think. And I applaud you uh, immensely for doing this. I think you're extremely brave um, and very intelligent. And I, I really appreciate uh, what you're doing. Um, but, you know, have you had a lot of support from your parents or what are their thoughts on everything? My dad is happy that I'm pro-gun. He um, owns a lot of guns and he, no one was willing to talk to me about it right after the shooting. They were all kind of waiting for me to bring it up. And so when I got all the facts, I went to my dad to get more information because he's like the gun person in our family. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this just doesn't seem right what they want to do. And he was really happy to hear that I didn't become anti-gun and want him to get rid of all his guns and um, stuff like that. Well, you know, it's kind of like getting rid of all the fire extinguishers in the building. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, really, when you, you know, when you mention having somebody armed, and I totally agree with teachers. I, if a teacher wants to carry and takes all the training necessary, I think a teacher should have that ability, personally. Yeah. Wow. And you now you also uh, and you're not it's this isn't your only focus. You, you're you actually starting a not for profit. I know you said it was kind of sidelined by covid, but you're starting a not for profit or an organization 
um, to uh, try to get more counselors on campus so that when there is a, you know a troubled student like was that that was at your your school that they can get the help they need and that, that can get recognized and, and handled quickly right do you want do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah so the one thing that all shootings have in common is mental illness um, if you're having homicidal thoughts you are not mentally okay and um, help needs to be sought. And right now, our academic counselors are not fit to be handling mental health problems. In fact, it's more of a, we're going to do what we can to not be liable anymore, and then we're going to ship you off to your parents. Mm -hmm. Um, And if your parents are the problem, which what they think is what happened with the shooter, um, that's not going to help very much. So I really want there to be trained counselors on campus. I want there to be mental health resources for people who need them. Um, And worst case scenario, if no one needs it, at least it was tried. (laughs) Well, you want to be proactive, not reactive, because once the shooting happens, what's the first thing they do? They bring in counselors. Well, that's not, that's closing the barn door after the whole herd's left. And I can't believe you get so much, you know, so many people going against that mindset it's just mind-boggling but it i can't tell you how proud we are that you're standing tall because i know this is not easy i can hear it in your voice but you've got our we've got your back and if there's ever anything we can do from our side of it you know we're here for you and you just don't be deterred you know this is happening for a reason and, and and i think you're the right person to do this i really do Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. You did a wonderful job. Absolutely. Everybody listening, go to sdcgo.org slash blog and read Kaylee's article and share it and talk about it. It's called Gun Control is Killing Our Kids. Uh, Kaylee is a senior in high school. Uh, she's going to graduate early this December, and this is not the last time you're going to hear from Kaylee. Absolutely. I guarantee you that. And we'll send you this interview, and you can put it on Facebook, share it with your friends, and it'll be on sdcgo.org as well. Kaylee, thank Thank you. you Thank you very much. All right. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got uh, another special guest in the house. Boy, you got a tough tough, uh, girl to follow there, young lady. And that will be Desi Bergman. And she's going to talk about hashtag not me SD right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. folks welcome back to gun owners radio fm 961 am 1170 the answer segment brought to you by the gun range san diego 7853 balbo avenue in lovely san diego they're open sunday through thursday 10 to 7 and 10 to 10 on friday and saturday go to the gun range san diego.com i call it the nordstrom's of gun ranges just not the price it's all about service They've got classes. They've got specials on guns. They've got rental fleet that you can shoot before you buy. And they have the most talented employees possible. So that's the Gun Range San Diego, the Gun Range San Diego.com. All right. You want to introduce our special guest? Since you do that so well, <laughs> sure. Desi Bergman is uh, you're the what's your what's your exact title? I'm a project manager. Okay, for you. project manager. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be introducing Does her. Does she work for you? <laughs> yeah, I know. She's a project manager for San Diego County Gun Owners, and she is solely in charge of our Not Me SD project. Which is, yes, sir, I am. Which is very, very awesome. And uh, she, Desi, you, you've done such a fantastic job. You know, we started this Not Me SD program, which Desi's going to talk to us about. Uh, a year ago, March, we had a press conference. We, we took us a couple months to develop it, uh, developed by women in San Diego County Gun Owners, specifically, specifically for women. Um, and we had a press conference in March and had literally an overwhelming response. 160, 180, something like that. People said, hey, I, I want to be in tra- or involved in this program. And for a year, we were kind of limping along. And then we got Desi involved. And you have turned it around and done a fantastic job in the last couple of months. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Should we call it. her Spark Plug? Absolutely. I, I can take that nickname. <laughs> so tell us, so tell, give, tell everybody what is Not Me SD. 
Yeah. Hey, guys, thanks for having me on today. I do appreciate that. And that's a really hard guest to follow up with Kaylee talking about her story. So I'm going to do my best here. She was awesome. She was very awesome. That's a great story. So just like people like Kaylee, we are a program developed by women for women. And we are here to help stop sexual assault and domestic violence in San Diego. So these crimes have been increasing, you know, over the past couple of years. And so we want to make sure that women can empower themselves with the tools to protect themselves. So Not Me SD, like Mike said, you stole my lines there, (laughs) is a program developed by women for women. And we help with training. We help with firearms ownership and helping women get their CCW. So when I took over the program about six months ago, we had over 200 women that had inquired to us to get help with anything gun related. So when I came in, it was really my job to reach out to as many of these women as we could. I followed up with our ambassadors that We have an amazing group of women that definitely helps us with the program and takes us along through the journey. And then we recently relaunched the program as well so that we we could, you know, open it back up again. And we've gotten a lot more inquiries, especially with COVID. You know, everybody's kind of like, oh, man, like I need to protect myself now. So, you know, that's really where we come into play to help these ladies out. And it's it, and, and a big part of your job, you talked about the ambassadors. Yep. A big part of your job is to organize the volunteers that we call ambassadors. Correct. Tell them what does an ambassador do? An ambassador is an, these ladies are amazing. And all of these ladies come from different walks of life, which I think is great. So we have a lawyer. I have someone that does pyrotech, which is awesome. I mean, all of these ladies come from different types of backgrounds and all love guns just as much as, you know, we do. And so their job is to reach out to all of our candidates or our ladies that have inquired to us and they answer their questions. So an applicant will go on to our website, which is notmesd.org, and they will submit an application. That information is gathered and sent to me. And it's just, you know, what are they looking for? Are they looking for help getting their CCW? Are they looking for helps in buying a gun? Are they a first time gun owner? So whenever I gather that information, I assign that to my team of ambassadors and they reach out and they will help walk these ladies through the process from A to Z. So no matter what they need help with, we have so many resources that are available for them to offer to these ladies to help get them along the journey. Because I want you to think about this, Mike, like you you have a gun, right? I'm assuming you have a few. Somewhere, yeah. (laughs) Somewhere. Somewhere around here. I don't know. But think about if you were in a situation where you didn't know who to reach out to for a gun. Yeah. But stay in a situation where you're a female and sometimes guns can be intimidating, right? Yep. So if you were to reach out and have another female that has experience with guns and can talk from personal experience, that would alleviate some of the scariness and kind of, you know, push them along the journey. Yeah. Well, I, that did happen. I was 21. I bought my first firearm. You were a lady at the time? No. no. <laughs> but but I didn't know who to reach out to. I mean, I was yeah. 21 years old. I purchased a, a pistol, a rifle, and a shotgun. Yep. And, uh, you know, I knew, I didn't know what I didn't know. Of course. And But it's intimidating for a guy, for a girl, right. for anybody. It's intimidating. I uh, don't quite know who who or where to go, you know who to talk to where to yep. go, um, and and the ambassadors don't necessarily do the training right. They're- no, they don't do the training. So with SDCGO, we have a lot of resources on our website that our ambassadors know to recommend to these ladies that are reaching out to us. Whether it be, hey, I want training on my firearm. We have what the gun that's on our website that has all of these resources for first time gun owners. We have a map that shows where all of the gun ranges are at within San Diego. So we can help, you know, with the introductions and get these ladies in contact with a trainer at the range. We can help them, you know, pick out a gun if that's something that they're needing. So we work hand in hand with our local ranges to help these ladies get the information that they're needing, whether that be training, purchasing a firearm. And then we do offer our CCW seminar. So if ladies are wanting that, then we do a ladies only CCW seminar once a month which it's just me and Wendy. We help them. We go through the process. We talk about, you know, your good cause statements, what it looks Mm -hmm. like. So that's a great resource as well to help them along the journey. So the ladies that contact you, Mm -hmm. I mean, do they have to have been through an incident or can they be proactive versus being reactive, which is a famous quote of mine i hate of course, reactive. i hate being reactive too. i hate being reactive too so if you, you young ladies if you're out there and you just don't want to be in that situation this is a perfect opportunity of course what, what's the cost there's no cost so this is a program that is free to anybody that wants help like we wow. really want to help you know prevent any situations that can happen so on average in san diego 
three rapes happen a day to women. Wow. But think about if you had another tool in your tool belt to help sure. protect yourself. I mean, our whole purpose is we do not want them to be a victim. Mm -hmm. So that's where really where we come into play. It's a free service that we offer and we love helping as many women as we can. And the success of our program has been so great over the last six months. Age, age requirement. No age requirement. As long as you're 18 and you can own a firearm. Right, the only right, thing that right, we look right, at, right. but my ambassadors range from anywhere and any age and walks of life, which gotcha. is great. And our women that are reaching out to us, you know, half of them, I would say they have, well, not half, but some of them have been in incidences where it's mm. really made them like Kaylee reach out and say, hey, like, I don't want it, this to happen again. Right. But others, because of COVID, are now in the situation where they've seen the riots, they've seen what can mm. happen, and they mm. really want to protect themselves now. Sure. And and financially, too, Dave, um, uh, you know, because, you know, if you if if they come to us and they don't have anything, hey, I, I don't own a firearm. I, I've never had any training. I certainly don't have a CCW, but I'm looking to purchase a firearm or I'm looking to get more training or get a CCW. Um, if they don't have uh, the, the, you know, the finances to to do any part of that, mm -hmm. um, there are ways that we can grant that to them and, uh, you know, find them discounts or even pay for the training. Right. Can't do that for every single person. But no, if no, you can no, really no. make the case that, hey, you know what, I am financially strapped. We don't want your finances, your personal finances to be, uh, you know, a uh, roadblock for, right. for you. to. And to, same thing with safe. the story. Correct. No matter what you think your situation is, you know at least contact you guys so you can make that decision. Oh, 100%. Everybody has their own unique story, and we're sure. never going to tell you no or turn you away because of your story. Right. We're here to help, and we want to be there for you every step of the way through your firearms journey because we know that it is a unique situation, and it can be a scary situation that you're in, and so we're a family here, right? Like, you know, once you become a part of the gun owners, you know, within community, San community yeah. you're family, and so, so we you protect each give other. a good path. One that you don't have to stumble and trip and fall and, you know, like most of us no, have no done through life. Bruises. Yeah, no bumps and bruises. Go to you and then you'll say, okay. And I, what I love about it is each each individual client or family member, yep. potential family member, you know exactly who to hook them up with. So, and the great thing about this too is once they reach out and I assign an ambassador to them, that ambassador stays with her throughout her journey. So, wow. they... If it's getting, you know, firearms and getting training, like mm -hmm. they'll check in with her. Hey, did you get this done? Or they'll reach out to, you know, Mike, Wendy or myself, and we'll make sure that they're, you know, going along their journey. Right. And we're not going to leave them until they feel that they've gotten all of the information right. that they need. And even then, they're still a part I, of I our family. Say, why do I get a funny feeling no one has ever left you guys? No one leaves <laughs> us because we're a family here. Well, that's just it. I mean, and we do need to work together. And, you know, ladies, if you're listening and you're in a situation that you're not comfortable with, you don't need to talk to me or Mike or anybody. You can talk to Desi and the team there. All you have to do is go to... NotMeSD.org. All right, then there's a hashtag in there somewhere. Right there. Nope, that's it. No, that's not a hashtag. Just NotMeSD.org. That's it. Go to that. That's it. Go to that website. All reach right. out to me, and I'll get you set up. All right. Well, that is so cool. And it doesn't cost a thing. Zero. Get you discounts the whole bit. You ain't getting all pushy in there, Mr. Brendan. Jeez Louise. If you're playing my song, I would have gone off. Hey, this is FM 961, AM 1170. The answer. Welcome back to Hour 2 of Gun Owners Radio with your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Germisi, and Michael Schwartz. Visit GunOwnersRadio.com with your questions and comments or to learn how to become a sponsor of the show. Time to get involved and get active. Together, we will win. Now here's Dave, Joe, and Michael on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks. Welcome back to Gun Owners Radio, FM 961, AM 1170. The answer. Hey, folks, self-defense and emergencies can happen to anyone, and unfortunately, the justice system may not be on your side. While you protect your family and property, U.S. Law Shield is here to defend you 24-7, 365 days a year with the comprehensive self-defense coverage at an affordable price. Bad guys don't take days off, and neither does our coverage. Get a plan from U.S. Law Shield. Check them out today at uslawshield.com. 
All right, we got Joe Germisi. He is our product inspector, and he has got a review of a. That's it. They didn't write it down. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let you tell me because I'll probably mess it up. I have a uh, a black hound rifle scope, a one by eight by twenty eight type um, rifle scope, and um, we got um, from uh, black. We're going to do this a little bit differently today. To uh, those of you that have been listening for a while, have probably heard the gear reviews we've been doing, mm-hmm. and uh, we're moving up in the world. And um, we've got um, we've got Rick Nair and Jim Peterson from uh, Black Hound Optics on the line. Rick and Jim, you guys there? We are. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. So uh, they were. Happy to on. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in here. And um, they were good enough to get us two different rifle scopes to take a look at. Right. So uh, we're going to talk about the one today, and uh, then we're going to go shoot the other one here next week, this okay. coming week, and good. we'll talk about that one in a week or two. And, and by the way, guys, I really appreciate you coming on. I have been pushing these guys to do product <laughs> reviews. For the last four years. And I want to thank you guys for hooking up, Joe, so we can let the public know what you're selling. Because, you know, we can talk about it without using it, and that's worthless. You got to have somebody that shoots, yeah. use it. So I just wanted to say that and thank and, you. And, and and you need somebody that's not biased. I mean, you, you go on every youtube channel nobody posts anything unless they're happy about it right so so we we welcome we welcome that's how we learn and how we make better products in the future get give us an you know an honest review right and uh you know if it's if it's uh you know we'll, we'll take all that in consideration as we develop okay well don't don't it, it don't took- shoot the messenger because if joe <laughs> loves it he's gonna love it but if he doesn't love it he'll tell you he doesn't love it but you're right you know i mean it's you know, and it sounds to me like you guys are pretty passionate about your product. So if he finds too much wrong, one of us will smack him. Mike, you had a it took it took us it took us this long to find a good product. That's what it is. Oh, I like so that. That was a good comment. <laughs> well, let me um give you a little bit of background real quick because um what we well from Blackhound's point of view um you know this is like the the everyman scope. So this is great for me to uh, to try out because uh, those of you that have been listening here, you know that I'm a pistol guy and I shoot a lot of handguns. I don't shoot a lot of rifles. I have several rifles. I've got a beautiful one here that I mounted their scope on (laughs) that I'll show you here in a second. Um, But uh, these are great scopes for people like me. I I shoot, you know, I shoot my rifle occasionally. I have fun with it. I enjoy it. Um, It's a, uh, these are great scopes. These are great for people that don't want to spend $2,000, $3,000 for optics. How easy was it to mount on your gun? This was very easy. So what we're going to do is... um, let me, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, the scope. I'll show you the scope here. Those of you that are following on uh, Facebook can see it. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the specs, and we'll have uh, Jim and Rick just jump in here uh, on some of the specs when we go through it. We'll take a look at the scope, then we'll come back on the next segment, and I'll tell you what we found when we went out and shot it and how okay. all that stuff went. So um, if we just take a look at this real quick, let's see, you guys can see it. So uh, this is um, my AR. It's a Daniel Defense, uh, beautiful AR that I need to shoot a lot more. Oh. Um, Will you quit bragging on your gun? No kidding. Look at him over there <laughs> gushing. Is. So you sure you it's not your this. son? Yeah. yeah, it just makes me feel guilty when I pick this thing up. Get a room. Um, and for those of you that are um, <laughs> those of you that are really paying attention here, you notice there's no magazine in here. There's yeah, a flag yeah. on this side, so the chamber's empty, and I will try not to point it at Dave while I'm here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, uh, so this is the Genesis 1x8x28 scope here it's uh so it's one by eight power scope um you can see the uh, the thing that's nice i didn't bring the packaging with me um i was going to bring it here but it's kind of crowded but it comes in great packaging for you guys that like that kind of stuff they give you everything you need it comes with the the rings the mount the hardware pretty much right out of the box and you can um pop it onto the uh to the rifle and go with it um it comes with covers up here so you've got the front cover you got the back cover uh, these things pop right off. Um, the illumination on the side is really nice, and what it does is it goes off every um, every click. So there's six different positions here, but in between each position, it goes to off, and it pulls out. I don't know, you probably can't see it, but it pulls out, and then you click it back in, so it locks into place, so you can't inadvertently knock it off or anything. So it um, works really well, and... Um, the reticle on the inside, I know when I was talking to Rick and Jim a little bit earlier, um, they did a lot of work coming up with this reticle. And um, it just works beautifully. It's really easy to see whether it's illuminated or not. Um, 
it's a um I was going to say it's a first focal plane reticle so what that means it's ahead of the um it's ahead of the ocular lens so um what that means is when you adjust the uh the power on this the reticle changes sizes with it and uh rick if you guys want to jump in or talk a little bit about that as we're going through yeah jim you want to hit that uh survey yeah what what we what we did and 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 i appreciate uh that i i i do wish you could have shown the box though because it's something that customers <laughs> keep you know but uh we'll, it, we'll do that in the future it is it's really but, nice uh, and i went back and forth whether to bring it and i had it with me by the door and i left it home <laughs> that that's that's fine but that's it is fine. a great box <laughs> But we did we did include um, everything you need. There's nothing worse than ordering an optic and then you get it home and you're all excited. You go, oh, now I got to go hunt down rings and hope I get the right set and hope they fit. You know. So what we did is we, we surveyed 13,000 U.S. shooters. We went to gun shows, we went to industry events, uh, and we surveyed these 13,000 people, distilled the data, and we we came up with what consumers wanted at the price point that people were asking for. And, you know, that, that was why we decided to include the mount, include the tools, include the levels. Um, you know, clarity and simplicity were right up front what they wanted. So it's a very easy reticle to read. You've got, we call that one on the one to eight, the Halo 2. So it's our second Halo design, but there's a ring. So if you're just real quick target acquisition, your close quarters or, uh, hogs rushing at you, whatever. Um, you've got that circle. You're going to get center mass and get your rounds on there. Or we have a girl right now that's 17 years old, competitive shooter. She's shooting out to 720 yards with that same optic. Wow! I gotta throw yeah. one. I gotta throw one thing in here because I'm old. I just looked yeah. at your your operation manual. You know the, the that comes yeah. with it. Thank yeah. you very much for making the print large enough for somebody to freaking read how many little operation manuals do you get and the print is so small and and i went through it on both sides it's nice it's big it's easy to read and i just needed to throw that out there as a positive because a lot of times it's the worst i mean you got pictures with everything and and, and hats off to those you guys either that or you guys can't see one of the two i don't know what it is and this is um this is what Dave's talking about, too. Of the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be a combination of both. I, I've got to tell you, it's funny that you mentioned that because we've actually studied so which that, font that. to use, and we, we go off of billboard fonts are designed to be the most easily read, easily seen. We use that on our reticles, you know, for the digits, and we use it in our print as well. Yeah. Well, you know, and this worked really well, and like I said, I'm I'm not a rifle guy, and it it really didn't take me that long at all to figure this out and uh, assemble this thing, get it on there. And um, in the next segment, we'll talk about the shooting a little bit, but this thing was dialed in pretty closely. I mean, it it did not take us um, really long at all to get it working the way we needed it to. And um, we showed the illumination over here. There's uh, two turret type adjustments here. And um, if you could see these guys, you've got the, um, got the elevation and the windage on the side, and they, they both have caps on them. And um, they're half MOA movements, so uh, they're What's really, an MOA? really easy to use. And that's a, um, if you guys want to talk about MOA, go ahead. It's a, uh, a minute of angle. So uh, what essentially okay. what it means gotcha. is at 100 yards out, you turn it one click, one MOA will move you one inch. Got well, I just had to throw that out there for the people that are brand new on the show. And well, that's good. I'm sometimes just... you get over technical there. Hey, we do have to take a break. <laughs> The most important thing I want to know is where you came up with the name. But that's another story. We'll do that when we come back. Folks, you're listening to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The Answer. There's more Gun Owners Radio with Dave, Joe, and Michael to come on The Answer San Diego. Welcome back to Gun Owners Radio, educating you on your Second Amendment right. Now, here are your hosts of Gun Owners Radio, Dave Stahl, Joe Dramisi, and Michael Schwartz on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks, welcome back to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170, The Answer. All right, and by the way, folks, all the shows that you hear can be found at sdcgo.org. Uh, 
whether it's be the, the equipment review that Joe's doing, it'll all be posted up so you'll be able to do that. And it's on just about all of our advertisers' websites, too. Yeah, it's on all the advertisers' websites. It's on gunownersradio.com. Yeah. You can see us on all Facebook page, San Diego, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino. We are all over the place. And all podcasting. All podcasting. Yeah, you can do The whole thing. We're all over the place. All right. Hey, folks, PRMI Mortgage. Guess what? Home mortgage interest rates have dropped. And if you're looking to buy or refi, or if you're considering a reverse mortgage, call our local mortgage guy that you can trust. That's Chris Wiley at PRMI Mortgage. For nearly 25 years, Chris has been helping local San Diegans with all their mortgage needs. Give Chris Wiley a call at 619-722-1303 or just go to primeres.com backslash alpine. All right, we are going to bring our guests back from Black Hound uh, Scopes. How'd you come up with the name Black Hound? Uh, you're, you're probably not going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I, I, I always reference our surveys, right? We, we're a very data-driven company, and black came up all the yeah. You know, we talk about black rifles, and then black, you know, you got all this black, black, black. So, so black came up, but we're like, okay, we don't want to be perceived as another tactical company, you know. Um, and we have a lot of hunters, and who doesn't like a puppy, right? <laughs> so. So we combined Black Hound. That logo is actually three different dogs. It's like a Labrador and something else. We morphed them together. And, uh, you know, so we, we didn't want to be like where, the you know, the, the, the left can come and attack us and say, wait a minute, you know, you're too rough and tough. So. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that does look like a puppy you could hug. I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> All right, let's get, let's get back to work. <laughs> Joe? Okay, so what we'll do is um, we'll go through and uh, – Talk about what we found at the range when we took this down there. So, um, and before I go in there, I just, uh, just if you're, uh, I'm piquing your interest now looking at this thing. This is a really great value. It goes for $450. Wow. Um, it's the Genesis 1x8x28 FFP rifle scope from Blackhound. Um, you can find them on blackhoundoptics.com. And uh, for Dave, this has a wonderful warranty. It's a lifetime transferable warranty. They will fix anything here. No kidding. See, I love warranties, guys, because if you have a great warranty, then people can trust your product because when you only have like a 30-day warranty, I tell people forget about it. Just don't buy it. You know what, Joe? I, I got to jump in there. Uh, not We don't repair your scope. You don't need the paperwork. You take that Daniel Defense gun. I hate to say it, but if you ever sold it to somebody, you don't need the paperwork. They give us a serial number off the scope. We'll ship you a brand new one wow. with, a re- with a return label, and you just drop your old one in the box and send it back to us. We, Excellent. Don't, make you, we don't make you wait three that's weeks. That's why you guys are month. here. <laughs> See, that's why. Well, and I, cause I told Joe to be real picky who he calls up. No, seriously. I was a service manager for 30 years. Warranty and product are extremely important to me. And if we keep gushing, we're never going to get to the to the shooting of this thing. What do no, you think? Right ahead. All right, so we'll give it a shot here. So we took this thing down. Ah. Um, yeah, no, no pun intended. No pun intended. So we took this thing down, uh, went to the Lemon Grove Rod and Gun Club, where I'm a member, great club up in Alpine. Um, and we set the targets out at 100 yards. So we put the, uh, the rifle on the bench. Um, and what we did, we started out with a real crude just bore sighting, just uh, taking the gun apart and just looking straight through the bore, lining it up on the target and matching it up with the scope. Mm-hmm. And it was right it was right there. We hardly had to move anything. Really? Um, so put it back together again. So we're um, on the bench. And at 100 yards, shooting uh, 12-inch circular uh, targets, 12-inch diameter targets, um, the groups that I was getting, we were shooting three to five uh, shots at a time. And I was getting probably a little bit over an inch, inch and a half groups, which for me on this rifle, I think I was extremely happy with. Yeah. The scope worked great. Um, like I said, hardly any adjustment with the scope at all. Um, so we did a little bit of that kind of stuff, and it worked out really well. The um, What we were shooting is um, I was shooting two two three ammo, so 55 grain ammo. And, uh, you know, nothing special. It was just off the shelf. And uh, then the other thing we did, we did something that uh, some of the guys were referring to as a tall target test. I know you guys had a different, more technical name for it. Um, it's right. a, it's essentially um, lining the uh, lining the rifle up, lining the scope up, sighting on a target, and then firing three or four shots. And then what you do is you essentially misadjust 
the um, elevation of the scope. So you turn it 26 MOA is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then you aim at the same spot on the target. And what should happen is your rounds should end up about um, 26 inches up higher. Mm -hmm. And then you uh, adjusted it again to 36 and uh, do the same thing. They should end up 36 inches higher. And then you adjust it back down to zero and they should come back to the same target or to the original target. And what that's doing is, uh, and go ahead, Jim, you guys jump in here, but I think what that's doing is checking the mechanics of your uh, adjustments on here, making sure they come back to zero. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. it's just basically a return to zero test. So you're making sure that the scope is able to adjust within the range of the turrets and then be dialed back down to where your zero is and still hit the same target that you started with. And, um, and it worked really well. And actually, um, you know, I grabbed the target that we used. And uh, I don't know if they could see this on here. Let's see what we got here. But um, if you can kind of see the target like this, um, you can see at the bottom where we were shooting and uh, the groups that are on here. And uh, again, this is me shooting, and you know, I'm I'm certainly not a rifle guy. But this is at 100 yards out. We made the adjustment, and you could see it up here at the 26 MOA. You know, just over to the side a little bit, and that was probably me, not the scope. And then the same thing up here. And the other thing, too, the way we were set up, um, the top of this target was kind of off and it was blowing around a little bit. So uh, it's going to have a little bit, little bit of movement there. But we moved it back down and everything returned right to the zero original spot. So it was great. These, um, the turrets are just, uh, are just really easy to adjust. It's, um, it's the clicks. You could feel each click, each half MOA click. And, um, Really, really happy with it. I thought it was just a great, uh, great experience. Um, okay, so what didn't you like about it? What would you like to see different? You know, the the only things, uh, and I, I was talking to Jim and Rick about this a little bit earlier, um, had to do with actually the manual thing. Um, and these are minor things, but uh, like the the tools, the little Allen wrenches that came with it, they turned out to be the wrong size. They were a little bit small. Okay. Um, the screws could have been a little bit tougher because uh, that, that was a discovery, um, you know, just turning on them a little bit. Because there's no, um, as great as that little instruction sheet is, it would be nicer if it had a little bit of guidance on the installation. Because, like, um, again, for somebody like me, there's a piece on the mount that you can install upside down, basically. And you'll catch it because you won't be able to level it it out. Let me guess you did (laughs) Wanted to try that out. Um, But, you know, aside from that kind of stuff, um, I mean, everything else was, was really good. This thing is really nice to adjust. It's just nice to use. So I really, um, I hate to disappoint you, but I can't find, uh, couldn't find anything substantial that was bad. Uh, just some minor things with the instructions. So, so let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question just real quick because we're getting close. But do you guys have like YouTube videos on your website that will walk people through the installation? Because there are some people like Michael that doesn't like to read. Hey. And he'd right, rather watch right. a video of somebody mounting the scope. Do you have that on your website? Uh, we, we don't have it in a YouTube video. Some of our users have. If you go to YouTube and search okay. Black Calendar, you'll right. find some. But we, we're actually developing a series right. of videos right now that will walk you through mounting to the operation to how to how to improve your skills in an intuitive way. So gotcha. that, that's coming up. That's coming up during, but between now and Thanksgiving, we'll have some of that. Routine okay. Released. So, what other? What I mean, besides this scope, how many different scopes, uh, and what? Do the, what's the applications that you guys sell? Right now, we have seven. We go from a one to four. Uh, we have a one to six, the one to eight that okay. you have right now. We also have a four to fourteen and a six to twenty-four. Uh, those two are both available in mill or MOA. Okay. Um, and then we have. A five to twenty-five by fifty-six and a four to thirty-two by fifty-six. That we've got the current prototypes right now. We're looking through them, and they should be able to be released uh, by the end of winter, beginning of spring. So we're we're actually moving. Uh, we're, we're 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 going a little bit up in scale, mm-hmm. and then we also have a three a three to nine. That's going to be one step in price. It's going to be one step. Uh, lower for mm-hmm. a, a very entry level kind of uh, so kind of fitness. so right now guys of of the scopes that you have available now is this one at 450 is about at the top of your price range everything goes down from there that, that is the top that is the most okay. expensive scope that we carry right now that's correct and we go down we go down to uh under 300 dollars wow perfect great and, value and all, of them, 
All of them include the rings. Well, you know, we we control uh, our manufacturing process. We we we've been. Uh, I said on the last time we were on, we're the oldest scope company you never heard of. This is our <laughs> first retail line. It's our first retail line, but we've got four decades of building scopes for other other companies. Wow! So, made so, in the uh, USA. Made in the USA. Uh, no, no, they're they're made in Asia, where every scope is made okay. right now. All right. We are in the process, though, of uh, and this is kind of eh, I don't know if I should. Say nah, that. I, already opened, I already let the cat out of the bag. We are in the process of moving some of this to the United States. All right. Well, I tell you what, uh, I'm not as big a gun guy as these guys are, but that is a definitely a nice piece of uh, of work. You guys have really put a lot of time, effort into it. And here comes Michael Schwartz. He's going to steal it. So that takes care of that. And it works well. And when we do uh, when we do the next one here in a couple of weeks, I'll make sure I bring the box in. <laughs> awesome. And uh, and we'll we'll be out there. I, I'm going to fly out, and I think James Mason, our CMO, we're both going to fly out for uh, Gun Prom. Um, oh. Uh, coming up in October, and and those scopes that you have there. Why don't we get together and do some kind of giveaway or something for? Uh, you know, some of your listeners or something like that. That'd be fantastic. And you got to be careful with that because our lawyer, John Dillon, he was giving away seats at the prom. Yeah. He says, yeah, just I've got five seats. Just send me an email, and I won't even tell you how many emails he got, so be ready. Oh, Literally I'm, dozens. I'm sure. Well, well let, let, let's get together and figure sure. something out, or, or, or if there's a charity you support. I know uh, right before us um, – you had on uh what was that not me not me ago? sd yeah that's yeah. Yep. Not me SD. yeah but yeah let, let, let's see if we can do something and uh and and help out a worthy cause in your area i'd love to i'd love to be a part of it our, our charity is joe Jermisi, and uh so we appreciate everything you did for him and <laughs> hey and while you guys come out for gun prom maybe have you stay till monday and we'll bring you in studio we'd love to have you that would be That'd fantastic be i'll be out there i'll be out there for about 10 days so oh. let's set it up Perfect. All right, guys. If, if Give us. I could just. Yeah, go ahead. Now, go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Just as far as the mounting goes, uh, I'm uh, the West Western U.S. dealer resource guy, and I'm pretty much always available. So, and I have all the equipment to help people mount scopes properly. Ah. So, if anybody ever needs to to have some help with that, I'm always available. Fantastic. And also, we have we have three dealers here in the San Diego area. I want to shout out real quick. Sure. Uh, we have armament in escondido who's a stocking dealer so if people want to take a look at these and get uh -huh. their hands on them uh those guys have them also gunfighter tactical in miramar right which is a, another great shop and then we also have bb family arms and munitions in fallbrook so all of those shops are carrying our products and all of those guys are very versed in mounting scopes as well so if people want to check them out that's a great place to start all right give the website out one more time it's at blackhound dot com blackhound dot com all right guys thank you very much blackhound optics oh, no, dot no. com blackhound optics dot com right, we do the same thing with our website yeah i don't feel bad <laughs> are you kidding just a bunch of gun guys and rick go pack go oh, hey hey <laughs> yeah thank you very much rick come over here and smack this guy will you <laughs> All right, hey, we're going to take a quick break. We come back. We got a whole lot more right here on Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. All right, back, folks. Welcome back. You're listening to Gun Owners Radio. On FM 96.1 AM 1170, The Answer. Hey, you know, thousands and thousands of new gun owners just found out what San Diego Shooters and Gun Owners Radio already knew. AO Sword Firearms in El Cajon has the widest selection of guns in the county. Hundreds of new and used guns in stock and everything you could want for an AR-15. AO Sword is also a professional gunsmith with a full machine shop for cleaning, repair, upgrading, customization. Check out A.O. Sword on fi on Facebook or just go to aosword.com. And if you're looking for a safe, they carry champion safes. And you cannot go wrong with champion safes. Go down and take a look. With that being said, we have our firearms technical expert, David Chong, on the line. Hey, David, how are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm, I'm thanking God for air conditioning this week. Don't start with us. We have no air conditioning in here, and we've all lost five pounds. <laughs> right. 
I, I may have lost you, six. You spent, Jesus. You spent all the air conditioning money on guns. Is that yeah, right? I swear it's hot in here. My it's a, Lord. It's like a gun owner's radio sauna in here. <sighs> oh, yes. I, I don't want to picture that. So, <laughs> it's 81 degrees uh, in studio, if that tells you anything. Ugh. Yeah. The, uh, the, the four months long run on guns uh, only continues. Um, hmm. words from manufacturers now are that uh, they expect the shortage to continue through the election and on into next year. So uh, I, I wanted to just talk a little bit about acquisition strategy, both for folks with friends who are getting into their first guns, as well as, uh, uh, you know, us shooters who uh, always are onto the latest and greatest next best thing. Uh I have seen the reason I want to talk about this is I've seen online just kind of a uh, increasing chorus of people saying, "Well, uh, you got to pay to play," and uh, as a result, people are paying six hundred and fifty, seven fifty. I saw a receipt from an Orange County gun store for eight hundred and fifty for a Glock nineteen. Yeesh. Uh, the plain old rostered Glock nineteen that. Uh, uh, on sale, you could find in the big box stores for four ninety nine during normal times. Uh, uh, we sell every every day for uh, um, I think just over five hundred bucks, five hundred and four dollars. I think we sell it for. Um, uh, the, the reason I'm, I'm mentioning it is because it, it, I, I don't think that people should accept as reality that well, you're just going to get gouged now, and you got to you got to uh, expect it. Uh, we are selling all of our guns. At, at MSRP, pretty much exactly MSRP or a couple few dollars below that. So, for example, a, a on roster Glock 17, Glock 19 uh, is going to cost you $544, which I, I think is just under MSRP. Um, and uh, at that price, uh, here's a little look behind the retail guns curtain. We make 20%. 20% of that is is shop profit. And when you consider that it, uh, we've calculated it takes us about $60. I hope I'm not getting too technical here, but I'm the technical expert after all. It costs us about $60 to, uh, to sell a gun, just to do the paperwork and processing and man hours to, to sell that gun uh, after taxes and so forth. And so uh, at MSRP, we're, we're just making about $60 on top of what it cost us to run the gun through the store. Um, because gun sales are at an epic all-time high, 20% is enough. And uh, our, our profits are better than they've ever been. And so to tack on an extra gouge fee uh, seems immoral, and, and I don't think people should stand up for it. And I'm, I'm going to go one step further and tell people it, this is the time for you to uh, – Pay very close attention to how your local gun store treats you. I am not the only one. There are there are a few good guys out there in Southern California who have their gun prices at or near uh, MSRP, and there's, there's others who are just happily raking people over the coals for as much as they can bleed them for. Uh, when you wonder why your local gun store can't match the big box sale price at uh, $20 over their cost during the uh, regular times. Remember, it's because that big box store bent folks over for 200 extra dollars when uh, when times were tough. Hey, David. Uh, and, and people ought to have memories. Yeah, go were, ahead. Were you saying, I, th I thought you were saying last week that you could get a hold of guns, like if someone wanted a particular handgun, you know, an on-roster handgun, and you didn't yeah. have it, you could you can pretty much order it. They may have to wait a couple of weeks or a month or something, but you could pretty much get a hold of it. Was that true? Yeah, that's it. and absolutely true. And that's what I'm getting to is so the manufacturers, they're not dummies. They they uh they don't like the idea of making forty dollars on their gun and you making and the retailer making four hundred. Uh, they set their value price point at, at a specific spot, and they they like to see their guns go for that value. Um, so uh, pretty much twice a week, I get a email or call from a, uh, 
uh, another gun store because I'm, I'm, I'm friendly with many. And they say, uh, we see you're, you're selling like 40 or 50 Glocks a week. Where in the world are you getting your Glocks? Because we've gotten three in the past two months. And uh, the answer is the allocations come to favored stores. And, and you're not going to be a favored store if you're selling Glocks for $850. Uh, and I'm not talking about off-roster Glocks that are always going to be a premium, double the price. I'm, t- I'm talking about plain old vanilla Gen, Gen 3 Glocks. And we get um, the real number is between 20 and 50 a week. And, and we work hard with our relationships with our distributors to get those. But one of the things that they really like about us is that we are selling them for MSRP. And so they have a, a warm fuzzy about sending them to us as opposed to other stores uh, because they feel like everybody in the supply chain is profiting in equal amounts. Right. Well, I've always had the attitude like at the baseball game, if you sell hot dogs for $2, you'll sell cases. You sell them for $9, you won't. You sell five. Yeah. You sell right. five. And it's all about customer and service. And it's customer service. You can make right. more money not, off of a mass than you can off of a few. Right. I, and, and over a long term, I yeah. tell you what, it, Hello. Uh, 20, 2018, you know, I was emailing individual customers saying, hey, I've got this one gun. Please come in because I need to make the sale. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Very, very slim pickings. And uh, God bless them. We, we ended up uh, buying out several of our friends who ended up going going under during sure. the Trump slump. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was a hard time. And and we as gun stores, we got to remember, you, you're not in it for the one sale one time. No. If, if you want to have longevity, you've got to make friends, not just make yeah. sales. Yeah. Well, one of the things I tell people all the time, and if you want to do something pro Second Amendment that's real easy to do, go buy stuff, anything, guns, mm-hmm. ammo, accessories, from a gun shop in San Diego or in your local, uh, if you're listening in Orange County, in Orange County, in, in your local neighborhood there, in your local city, um, where the owner is probably behind the counter. You know, not, you know, these other, the big boxes that are selling a whole bunch of other stuff. And oh, by the way, we have some guns. I mean, there's even less of an excuse for them to jack up their prices. They have other sources of, of, uh, of income. It's these local gun shops like David um, that, uh, hey, man, you know, they're here for you. So be there for them. Well, and not only that, I went down to Dave's store because I wanted to see the champion safes. And while I was there, I bought a hat. Yeah. I didn't ask for a hat. I didn't say, give me a free hat. I bought a hat. And I paid full retail for it. And I'm not saying that for any other reason than I want to support there you go. the local gun stores. And, you know, if he'd had a shirt in my chubby size, I would have bought one of those too. But he didn't have one of my size. Uh, well. Thank you, Dave, for making our hat look good. It does. I love that hat, by the way. It's, it's got an American flag on one side, embroidered in. I got the gray one. And it's got, uh, right. and I can't remember what the slogan says. It's in the car right now because I'm going to go to a... Italian place to get food, and I always like wearing either my San Diego County gun owner shirt, or now I'm going to wear my AO Sword hat in there. AO Sword custom tools with triggers. That's it. That's a great slogan. I love that. <laughs> I, I love that. that sl- yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, didn't mean to jump into your story, but yeah. no, no. We're, we're just talking. We're just talking. That's so, all we're doing. So let me ask you, David. I, I hate to see. I hate to see new folks paying dollars for a Glock. So and, I, I and that is not that is not the reality that people have to accept. No. So I get requ- real quick. I get requests all the time. You know, hey, I'm looking for. Especially most people out there are looking for a Glock 19. I get that request all the time. Yeah. Um, so if somebody wants a Glock 19, can they just come and get on a wait list, or can they come and talk to you and say, hey, next time you have one in, or what do you recommend they do? Yeah. You come in and pay for it. Come in and uh, buy it up front. Uh, we'll get a soft dross for you. We'll run the dross when uh, the gun comes in. Uh, typical weight on a Glock 19, which is the most popular, but also the most frequently received for us. We get about uh, this this week. We sold 28 of them. Wow. Um, Last week uh, it was probably fifteen. Oh, our uh, Rich's hand just went up. The guy in, in his, so apparently he sold one of them to somebody in the studio here with us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, it, no joke. That's we receive a lot of Glocks because they're the the most common, most sought after, and 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 it's not like when you order it, we go, oh, okay, we ought to order one. No, we've got 
we have outstanding orders for hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Glocks, and that's, it's just when they make them, they, they ship straight to us. Um, if, let's say you wanted a, I don't know, uh, a, a, a Springfield PRP operator. Well, uh, I do. I do I, want I one of those. Had, <laughs> I, I always try to have one on the shelf, but when I ran out, that, even back in the slump, it would be two to four months before one of those guys would become available. Wow. They're, they're, uh, they're rare guns. And so you might wait longer for one of those. It happens to be a bad example because right now I literally have a TRP operator full rail in the uh, showcase. But, I actually want the TRP. I, Is this something you could do for me? I want the TRP, uh, not the full rail. Uh, I want the, the, the black one, the darker one. But then I want to change out like the hammer and uh, a couple other, like the rear safety. I want to switch out the silver. You know, they have the silver one and they have the, the black one, the, you know. I want to switch Absolutely. out a couple of parts so that so that it's it, it uh, the accents are silver. What do you think you are a hot rodder? Well, you know. And then I want yeah, to put not, a hood not scoop. Not only can I do that for you, but <laughs> I have multiple options for you in stock. I have. Look at that. I probably have twenty five thousand dollars worth of 1911 parts in so, stock in the so store. So the TRP I love working on 1911s. The TRP has a magwell stock. Um, yeah. Can 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 I switch out that magwell? You can. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You Bring yeah, your checkbook. I hope, we I hope, will hook well, you up, my to. friend. I hope Laura's not listening right now. Yeah, yeah, right. Laura's not listening. Dan Chen flared Magwell welded on there. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. You are so good. All right, folks. A.O. Sword, take a run over. Check this guy out. He is off the charts. Thanks a lot, David. It's always good talking to you. And I'll come by and see you next week. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. This is FM. Oh, Gun Owners Radio, FM 961, AM 1170. The answer. All right, folks, welcome back to Gun Owners Radio. Can you believe two hours is almost up? Everybody clap if you enjoyed the show. FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. Hey, welcome back, folks. We are grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That we get to broadcast and bring you the best Second Amendment content show in the nation because of our sponsors. So please reward them by using attorney John Dillon, U.S. Law Shield, Firearms Legal Protection, the Gun Range San Diego on Balboa, A.O. Sword and El Cajon, PRMI Mortgage, and get yourself a Cali Key. Need to find out more info on our sponsors? Go to gunownersradio.com. All right, here we are. Our most popular segment every week. You write in and ask a question of Sam the Gunman, and if you use your gun trivia question, we will send you a nice shirt. And if you stump Sam, then we will send you a shirt and a hat. So without further ado, Sam the Gunman. What's up, man? Good evening. How are you? Good, Fan- bud. How are you? Fantastic. Well, well, I guess it's still afternoon for you guys, but whatever. Uh, it's, no, it's 10 to 6. Do you okay. get? Do you get? We just had uh, the owner of uh, uh, Black Blackhound Black Hound Optics. Do you guys uh, sell Blackhound Optics? Uh, no, I can't say we do. Got to check them out. They're actually right down the. Road. They're in uh, Georgia, uh, out of Georgia, right? Joe, were so, you just about to say that's just down the road? For it's me? just down the road. I mean, it's a big freeway, but it's a road. Okay. Um, <laughs> Could you tell me how far you are from Cupertino? <laughs> just down the road. Yeah, just down the road. Okay. That's- hey, I've driven from Virginia to Tallahassee in a day. It was a long day, but I did it. That's some dedication. Yeah. All right, my friend. Are you ready? That was from that was from uh, that was from your mom and dad's house too, actually. All right, ready? Here we go. Um, stump my nephew, Sam the Gunman, my twenty-one year old nephew. Again, happy birthday from last week. Uh, Brian from San Diego, uh, here's, I, this, this might be uh, a little obscure. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a little bit of leeway. If you get this within, no, if you, if you get the answer within 10 or 50, within 15%, um, we'll, we'll call this a win. All right. So Brian in San Diego, he wants to know the cyclic rate of a Dylan M134. He wants to know the cyclic rate of the Dylan M134. Hey, Brian, thanks very much for writing into the show. Um, now, 
Uh, I'll, I'll lead off with uh, the answer. Depending on, um, it really depends on what kind of motor you have driving it, how much power you're supplying. Uh, but generally, you're looking at about four to six thousand rounds per minute. That's friggin' <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I even tried to make it easier for you. Okay, so tell everybody what is a Dylan M134. Um, so everyone likes um, everyone likes bullets. Bullets are nice, um, and they can poke holes in things from a long way away. So uh, the um, the M134, also known as the mini gun is a six-barreled uh, rotary Gatling gun um, chambered for 7.62 NATO um, and fed by an electrical drive system with motors of varying horsepowers depending on the application. Uh, and obviously, the more horsepower you give it, the faster the barrels rotate and uh, the more rounds you get downrange per second or per minute or whatever unit of time you want to use. Um, the, the concept of having a rotary barreled machine gun actually dates back all the way to, I want to say the 1850s or 1860s when Dr. Richard J. Gatling, uh, devised the very first one. Uh, but now, um, they're very useful in aircraft applications for, uh, spitting out a lot of lead really quickly. So who, where are you going to find one of these? Uh, talk to General Electric. <laughs> I mean, on what kind of craft are you going to find one? An M134? Uh, generally on uh, in a door mount on helicopters or something like that. Um, 762 NATO is a potent round by uh, shoulder rifle standards, but airplanes that shoot at other airplanes uh, need to use something a little bigger, so they use generally a 20 millimeter or 25 millimeter Gatling gun. Uh, but the M134 is very good in a ground attack role. Well, so the guy that, that I just happened to know, the guy that uh, sent this in, was a uh, door gunner in the military. I forget which branch. He's going to beat me up because I can't remember what branch. Um, I think it might have been, it could have been the Space Force, I think. Cause what he it served can't be the Space, the Space, Space Force, Force yet. I can't remember which branch. He was a branch. door gunner. He was a door yeah. gunner, and uh, he was attached to f- some special operations units. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that, uh, that he asked this question. But fantastic job, my friend. Always. I know, right? Oh, yeah. Didn't even hesitate. You could tell when he gets that tone. Oh, I know. You he gets can. that tone in his oh, voice. Yeah, you're you like, can. all right, here it comes. Yeah, because when he doesn't know it. You probably see the glint in my eye from 3,000 miles away. Absolutely, because <laughs> when you don't know, there's this deafening silence <laughs> for a couple of seconds. <laughs> I will tell you, for the last couple of days, I thought of, I thought, well, this is too obscure. This is too hard. You'll never figure this so out. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I could like just slip him a clue somehow or something like will that. Will you quit being a friend? I know. I didn't do it, though. I didn't do anything. I was like, eh, you know what? You got to fail sometimes. Yeah. But he didn't. So. Yeah, but it crushes him when he fails. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> It he does. goes into massive depression, <laughs> and all his friends take a horrific beating. <laughs> so the other, so the, these Dylans, you can if you pull them up on YouTube, you can see a lot of really cool videos, um, especially because uh, I think they 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 load tracers in them a lot, and and, and you can see some uh, low light videos and all kinds of really cool um, YouTube videos in, involving them from helicopters and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, those tracers are how you aim. I mean, the the newer ones have a rail so you can mount some kind of optic, but really you're you're mostly aiming by point of impact like a water hose. <laughs> wow. Hey, check out that Blackhound uh, scope optics that, uh, or blackhoundoptics.com uh, that we uh, did a review on. Man, it's it's pretty it's pretty sweet. You might like it. We'll do. Um, we carry a lot of SIG optics and we really like Holosun. But um, I, I will look them up. Blackhound, you said? Yep. Yeah, Blackhound Black Optics. Optics. And when you contact them, contact them, tell them that you heard it right here on Gun Owners Radio. Yeah, we reviewed the one, what, one to eight power? One to eight power, yeah. And it's got an illuminated reticle. And what did you think of that when you it looked does. through it and put the light in it? I thought it was crystal clear, and uh, the reticle was very, very cool, very, very easy to, to see and use. And then when, when Joe taught me how to light it up which was also very easy um i thought it was outstanding and your favorite before that was uh leupold you know i actually i have a really really nice leupold scope it's a 24 power uh uh uh, leupold scope on my my 300 wind mag and you know, I, I think a lot of people would argue that's just about one of the best. Did you pay four hundred dollars uh, for it? 
I no. <laughs> Paid a couple more than four hundred dollars. Yeah, I think. But this scope, uh, you know, um, it's kind of apples and oranges. But uh, this was even compared to Leopold, it was extremely nice, and I paid a lot more than four hundred. Yeah. Well, Leopold. that's what I'm saying. You know, using it just as an everyday kind of thing, you know, on an AR, it's not yeah. a real precision scope. But four hundred fifty dollars, you that, not very precision. You hit the target. Well, no, didn't no, you? it is, but not not guys that shoot a thousand yards or uh, whatever. No, I think that one day I think it was perfect. For, for an AR platform. Yeah. yeah. And it's probably perfect for, uh, you know, you, you put that on a, you know, Remington 700 and you're, you're going deer hunting and, you know, Sam's out in Virginia. You go into, you know, some of the uh, areas Back of Virginia. Country. Yeah, Virginia doesn't have, you know, big old, you know, plains you and fields. You can't see 30 yards. Right? Can't see, yeah, so, I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. perfect, absolutely perfect for, yeah. for that application. How's that for a recommendation there, son? Sounds good. Um, I know LPVOs, low power variable optics like that, are um, really popular as of late uh, because of their lightweight and compact size. Um, it, it's funny, on most of the ARs you'll see out here, almost everyone has a, a one power red dot or holographic sight, just because, as you were saying, um, there's hardly anywhere to shoot out past 100 yards, let alone mm. 300. Yeah. I could, um, my EOTech, um, anything under 100. Uh, you know, was was good to go. Right. Anything under 100 yards right. was good to go. It had, what is that? A, is it a one MOA dot or a two MOA dot in the center? Uh, one MOA dot with a 68 MOA ring around it. At, anything under 100 yards was. I mean, the, you look at that at an EOTech or a little you know red dot like that, and you think like close quarters combat and you know yeah, quick right. acquisition, but it was uh, absolutely usable uh, right. below that. But uh, anyway, all right, Sam. <clears throat> thank you a million as usual. Look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks very much for having me on. Always a pleasure. All right, buddy. Hey, folks, this is Gun Owners Radio. And don't forget, Bob Siegel is in the wings, and I see smoke coming out of the other room. So <laughs> it's going to be a one hot show. So make sure you, you do not touch that dial. This is, oh, and by the way, thanks to Michael Schwartz. Thanks to Joe Dramisi. Thanks to our, our cameraman, Rich, over here. Appreciate it. And, of course, the happy one, Brendan, the board op on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl.